is actually included in the... This meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. That's a good point. Thank you, Mr. Carl. And I, I guess I also want to emphasize we're really in two parallel processes. Um, somebody's got a phone on. I hope you can hear me. Because we still have to respond to the city council amendment on the timeline we've already established, which is by our August 5th meeting. But this one we'll have to do sooner because it wants to go through more processes with the city council. Chair Clegg, you had your hand up. Yes. Um, I was just wondering if we need to, uh, to notice a special meeting for the 29th or if that is considered an adjourned meeting. Uh, Mr. Chair, we uh, adjourned the meeting without adjourning to that date, so we will be calling that as a special meeting and then adjourning from that. We're adjourning, we are calling a special meeting for the 27th and adjourning that meeting to the 29th. I'm sorry. So okay. no separate notice is necessary? Not when we adjourn from one meeting to the next. We will need to call the special meeting for the public hearing next Monday. We will adjourn after the public hearing to Wednesday to take action. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to open it up now to comments. Um, we, we began the discussion at our special meeting of the proposed amendment, and now is the time to consider people's thoughts about that amendment and also questions about any resources, any additional resources, if any, we might need to consider the amendment. And I also want to Tell you heads up, I have a, another suggestion about it, but I would like to wait till after the comments. Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Jarrell Isaacson. Please go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about is if we could get an answer from the city attorney in regards to if this amendment went forward and the city council's amendment went forward, what would happen if both questions passed? Uh, the referendum. Uh, Madam Chair I, and members of the Charter Commission group, um, I am working on that. That was already po uh, posed, that question was, and that's something else that I will provide. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'm not seeing. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, are, we, are we discussing the amendment now or, or is the commissioner going to review his amendment first? Well, we, I think he reviewed it during the special meeting. Um, would you like him to review it again, Commissioner Shortska? Um, I, I want to express concern over the amendment. Um, by and large, what we're doing is we're um, defunding the present police department and we're hoping the council and the mayor can get together and figure out some way to fund it. Um, there's no timeline on it, so we don't know, you know how long the city will be without any money to fund um, that whole department. I don't know what happens to people who need help. Um, and there's, there's, there's no department because there's no funding for it. Uh, I'm concerned about that whole issue. I would prefer that we would take the time, figure out the best way to structure the city of Minneapolis Police Department and do that rather than to do something in haste and um, not know whatever is going to happen after that because the council mayor seemed not to be able to get together in a lot of different things, especially money. Madam Chair, Commissioner Jarrell Isaacson, if I could respond. Yes, please. Oh, thank you, and thank you, Commissioner Schorschkoff, for that uh, concern and question. Um, the amendment does not defund uh, Minneapolis Police Department. Um, only the city council and the mayor could actually take the funding away through the budget process. What it does, though, is it gives the voters a chance to say, we want the city police department budget to be worked out between the chief and the mayor and the mayor and city council, just as every other department is done. So while there could be a city council that takes funding, there could be another city council in the future that adds funding. There's no limit uh, in the funding. We just remove the minimum requirement from the charter and align the charter 
in, in the same way with other departments when it comes to uh, to the size of the department. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kozak. Um, Madam Chair and uh, Commissioner Isaacson, I agree with the uh, Commissioner Drew Isaacson's um, interpretation. How, I guess maybe another way to put it, what the amendment does, it doesn't necessarily defund the department. It doesn't, but what it does, it gives the council and the mayor license to, license to defund it. Uh, I know that it, the amendment says that there must be a police force. Uh, however, uh, theoretically, you could knock down that police force to four or five people once we remove that minimum. Um, and I think that's how this amendment would be interpreted, that it's permission, it's a license to the council and the mayor to, to defund the department, the traditional police department as we know it. And I guess as long as it's comment time, I would just add that uh, um, we have been, some people have been critical of the council for for sending this their amendment over to us at such a late date, giving us very little time to, uh, um, to, to truly consider it, to have people that know uh, something about some, or have some expertise and some experience in uh, police matters uh, to come before us. Uh, they didn't come before the city council. They've had no hearings on this. Uh, we've had one and uh, one's coming up this after, uh, later on today, but uh, it's, it's pretty hard for us to criticize the city council uh, for rushing this process when we're in effect doing the same thing. Um, and I, I think once again, just like some of the other items that are in the council uh, proposal, uh, what we're doing is we're asking the public to uh, trust that the council will make the, uh, we're giving them a license to do something, but we don't know what they are, what in fact they're going to do. Uh, we don't even have a hint of, uh, and so I guess, that's my concern. I'll be anxious to hear what people have to say when we have our public hearing on, on Monday. But uh, this, is a, this is certainly a, a more focused amendment than what we got from the city council. But on the other hand, uh, this is a very significant, a truly significant uh, piece of work. And we're asking the public to, uh, to, to take a vote when I don't know that they've got enough information to make what I would consider an informed decision. And I think that's one of the responsibilities of this commission is to make sure when we do allow whatever latitude we have of, uh, about controlling what goes on the ballot, that we at least give people a chance to make a truly informed decision. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, if I could. Sorry, Madam Chair. This is Joe sure. Isaacson. If I could um, just quickly respond. Um, sure. So the the voters in Minneapolis would have time from uh, from August until November to become informed on the on the amendment that I'm proposing. Um, it is quite simple, um, and it it does give the power to the mayor and the city council to decide how they want to fund policing. And so the decision very well could be from the voters: No, we don't want the city council and the mayor. Um, um, taking the minimum funding away, and that in itself would be a message to the city council. So I think there's enough time for the voters to get educated. I think it's a clear amendment. It can be discussed like that. It can be uh, debated, and the voters would decide in November. Commissioner Ginder? Thank you. Just a quick comment. Um, I know we talked about the timeline. Um, the election is November 3rd, but remember, early voting starts September 18th. So for either amendment, um, as they move forward, um, it's a much smaller timeline than we commonly talk about. It's not November. It's really, I believe, the correct date is September 18th, the beginning of um, uh, early, early voting. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Commissioner Perry. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'll just uh, say that I um, share Commissioner Kozak's concerns as well. 
Um, I also think it, um, it, as far as I'm concerned, there's an, there's another component in addition to the concerns that were raised by Commissioner Kozak, and that is that I think having both this amendment and the council's amendment, and, and they pretty much flat out said that they are going to put their amendment on the ballot, whether they're not going to take uh, guidance from us. Uh, they said pretty much when we talked with them that they were going to put their amendment on the ballot um, without even considering small word changes that we might have. Um, I think having both of them on the ballot is a ca is cause for confusion, um, and and I think that is a problem. And I I do want to emphasize because I've been consistently saying that I think we need to take the time to reach research this stuff and the implications that well the the change that um, Commissioner Gerald Isaacson that you have made is simple in in the language change. I think the impact is unknown still. Um, I don't think we have any way to know what the implication is given the information we have today. So granted that it is more focused, but I, I think still the implications are significant. And I have, I have grave concerns about that. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever is speaking, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Um, Commissioner Ginder, you had your hand up. I'm, I'm sorry, that shouldn't take a while. Okay. And Commissioner Kozak, your hand up again or Yes, just just uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just one more one more point. Okay. Um well actually two. Uh first of all, we had an old saying in politics for many years that campaigns are not a good a good time to educate the public. And to say that we'll use this time the campaign time between now and November as uh, as uh, Commissioner Ginder said, we're we're looking at mid-September to November. Uh, people are going to, when we get to that point, there's only going to be one question. Most people I know are going to think, how are we going to go vote and uh, on, the pres on the presidential question, not on the police matter. Secondly, I think we have an, do have an obligation. If we're going to send something to the public, uh, granted, this is a very simple uh, proposal, to give the to take away the uh, minimum uh, personnel or complement requirement that's in the charter today, but uh, you know I can imagine a lot of people are going to be conflicted. They're going to say, "Well, um, I, I don't know that I want to go that far," but on the other hand, I want to do something to show that we really need to reform this department to have a cultural uh, change in the department. But I don't know that this is the way to go. So how are they going to? Uh, to me, I would be. I would have. It would be a dilemma. I'd say I don't want to. I want to make a statement. I want to say, show that we need to make a change, but I don't think this is the way to go. And the only way we're going to give people a clear choice, so is is to have um, is to put some details so that they at least know if we do A, this is going to happen. If we are likely to happen, if we do B, uh, this is going to happen. So I think, uh, I just don't think the public is, is ready because we haven't, nobody, the council, the commission, nobody has done the work to explain why we need to change the charter. Uh, what, what does the, why do we need to change the, char the charter in order to implement uh, genuine cultural and operational reform in the Minneapolis Police Department? And as the uh, chairman just reminded us, last night there was a, a bill passed some of it may be redundant to what the city's already doing, uh, but there's a lot, so many unknowns. And I, I think uh, next year, if we, I think we have an obligation to give the public a real choice next year. And it's going to be at a time when the election next year is going to be about the city. 
and only about the city, not about whether Trump is going to be president for the next four years. Uh, so I guess I've said that's my comment. And uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Ginder. Right? Madam Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Jarrell Isaacson. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for for that. Um, there is a lot of concern about uh, how fast all of this is moving, and I can appreciate uh, that. Um, I would still hold that um, the, my, the proposal I'm putting forward uh, is not only clear in language, but it's clear in the action, right? So it, it's totally up to the city council who are elected and the mayor who are elected to determine what the funding is. So if you're going to the ballot box to vote on this question, if you say I, then you're saying the city council and the mayor should budget the police department without consideration to minimum. If you vote no, then you're saying no, we want as, as the public to say we want a minimum funding of the police department. So I think it's, 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 it's a clear question of whether or not there should be minimums for the police department. So uh, I think the language and the impact are, are, um, are pretty easy to understand. Now, what we will never know is what this city council or this mayor or any future city council or mayor are going to do with that. I mean, there's no way for us to walk through all the scenarios of what city councils of today and future would do with um, the ability to budget without a minimum. So that would be really difficult to try uh, to determine. Commissioner Perry. Yes, thank you. Um, this is one of those things where, again, I think um, I, I am I'm sort of repeating myself, but I also have a request. Um, the language is simple, but the implications are great. And the implications are great, it's for me right now, are unknown. One of the things that I would like, this is one of my requests, is I'd like to hear from the chief and see what he thinks the reason is why, whether he cares whether there's a minimum or not. And, um, and I'd also like to know the history behind why there is, I, I know that there, it was put in in 1961, but I'd like to know why this city has a minimum requirement. I can guess from my, myself why there's a minimum. But I'd like to know what the, the history and the politics are were for having it and why it has remained in, in our Constitution for as long as it has. Thank you. Commissioner Kozak? My hand is down. <laughs> okay. Commissioner Abbott. Um, yeah, I would only add, in a, I, I think I support uh, the substitute that uh, Commissioner Jero Isaacson has proposed. I think uh, I, I would only add to the debate that, you know, one of the principles that I follow or I think is appropriate for looking at the charter is I don't think the charter is an appropriate instrument, instrument to incorporate policy decisions. And the question of what the appropriate staffing level for the police is, is really a policy decision that ought to be um, de debated in the, in, the, in the budget every year by the, uh, the political branches of the government. Um, I, the, more we, the more we load up the charter with specifics, the more we tie ourselves into knots. And I think Minneapolis city government already has a reputation for being unresponsive um, and difficult to deal with, and uh, like I say, I think the, that it's, it makes the situation worse when we have these policy requirements in the charter. Um, I would support, you know, separate from the whole police reform question, just on uh, just on the question of does it fit the charter, I would support this amendment because I think this amendment would remove uh, some un uh, unnecessary policy language from the charter. Thank you. Uh, Chair Clegg? If we were writing a charter from scratch, um, we would never put in minimum staffing for any department, including the police, fire, or any other department. As Commissioner Abbott said, we would leave that to the elected officials. So I don't have a concern with that, and that's not how I would draft the charter. Um, the concern I do have is 
as to whether there is adequate time uh, for the public to consider this uh, in the short time we have left before the election begins. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Abbott, and then Commissioner Kozak? No. No, I'm, I'm no. done. I don't have anything. You're done. Okay. Anyone else? Nope. I had um, a thought. I came from it, came to it from a different angle, which is, and I understand what everyone is saying about that it's being rushed and we haven't done enough study. Well, City Council certainly hasn't done enough study. We haven't had enough time to do a lot of study. And so for that reason, I I like, um, I, I agree with Commissioner Gerard Isaacson's amendment because it is simple and it addresses one of the main concerns that I'm hearing, um, which is that it's it, it takes, it, it puts some inflexibility into the structure and taking it out is maybe a good thing. Uh, my other concern was that given the groundswell of feeling because of George Floyd's killing and because of all the discussions every day in the newspaper and all the social media about the police and the fact that this is something that time has come for whatever good or bad reason. Um, another concern that I'm hearing and is that the city council ought to have some opportunity to do restructuring and do it over time in the next year or whatever they want. And that one way that we could facilitate that without putting a whole lot more into the amendment would be simply to add the department that they want in the list of departments in section 7.2 of the charter. In other words, just creating a department of community uh, safety and whatever the <laughs> name of it is and uh, leave it to them to create it. But if it's in the charter, it will give people something to vote for and to keep talking about and being engaged in without being either inflexible or carved in stone. And Madam Chair, I think that would be a Department of Community Safety and Violence right. Prevention. <laughs> Sorry, yes. No, no worries. Commissioner, Sorry, did somebody just speak? Um, Chair Clegg. I have no objection to uh, adding that to the proposed amendment and think it would be a good addition. There already is a violence prevention group. Um, I don't know if it's a department, and if it is, it's not a charter department, but it's certainly worthy of being one. So I would support that change. Commissioner Abbott. Um, I agree with uh, Chair Clegg. Uh, Commissioner Gerard Isaacson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I also agree um, and would uh, see that as a friendly amendment if that's what the Charter Commission wanted to do with my uh, motion moving forward. I'm assuming that we the motion will um, actually be voted on after the public hearing on Monday. And so right now we're just talking, we're just discussing. Um, hey, Madam Chair, um, Commissioner Schwartz, got about that. Um, if we add that department or whatever it is today, will people then assume that there will no be longer be a police department, but will, this will be something else, or that we'll have a police department, and another department, and that police will be in both departments? I mean, I. I think it becomes more confusing again by adding this other department. Um, that may be, but I thought of it the opposite way, Commissioner Schwartzkopf, because um, it, uh, Commissioner Gerard Isaacson's amendment leaves the department, the police department, intact. And this just adds the other 
uh, department that the city council seems to want to add in any of that. Uh, Commissioner Ginder. Thank you. Um, briefly, um, this, the attractiveness of the Drew Isaacson Amendment right now is its simplicity. And if you start to amend that by throwing in um, a new department to be created under that, I think you're going to lose um, a lot of support from people who, who like the simple idea of giving them the, the complete budget restriction. Um, as has been pointed out, the city council has the current power to create whatever department they want right now. It just wouldn't be a charter department. And the city council currently has that excess amount of um, play between the minimum requirements of the charter and what the force is today, which is roughly $15 million. And they could defund 150 police officers approximately today and use that money, uh, $15 million, another 150 employees or whatever department they wanted to create it without any charter amendment of any kind. So to the extent um, uh, I, I like the Gerald Isaacson Amendment, it's because it, it's simple. It removes the one item that would normally, as a chair of it would not be included uh, in the charter. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Abbott and then Commissioner uh, Chair Clegg. My, my offering is procedural. Somebody's obviously got their phone on or is not muting because we're getting a lot of background noise. So can I just request that anyone who is not currently speaking uh, mute your microphone or mute your phone if you're calling in. Thank you. Uh, have any other? You've been muted. To unmute yourself, press star six. Um, any other comments or questions? Sorry, I just hit the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> Check to see if anybody else wanted to speak. Well, we'll we'll be talking more about this next week, of course. Uh, so maybe we should move on to the next item on our agenda. Madam Chair, before you okay. go on. Sure. Yeah, um, I didn't raise my hand, but um, is there a way we could hear in the time that we have remaining, not today, but in the time, along the timeline that we have remaining, could we hear from uh, Chief, the Chief Arredondo on what he thinks about having that minimum removed? Is there a way we could request him to come back to the work group or at least have something in writing? Mr. Carl, what's your thought? I'm happy to reach out to him and ask him to either respond to that question in writing or to attend a future work group meeting in person to give you his answer. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Perry. My only concern is, of course, you know, it, um, Chief Arredondo is, of course, the chief now, but he won't always be the chief, and we're looking at long-term structure. So while his opinion might be of great interest to us, it's not the by any means, the final answer. Um, Madam Chair, the other question that uh, Commissioner Perry raised, I think, is also important. What was the reason for this amendment back in 61? I don't know if there's any history on it. I don't know if there's any council members living back in those days, but it would be very helpful to understand why we have it. As, as I recall, there was something somewhere in all the materials we've been looking at. Yes. Yeah. Chair Clegg, you may, or Mr. Carl. Madam Chair, I'll quickly respond to that is that there was an initial round of research into that uh, that we did for the council. Others in the community have done even more extensive research by going into the archive record. Um, we could quickly pull that together and I can distribute that to all commissioners. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carl. Chair Clegg? I've, I've seen that online as well. And 
basically, to summarize, it looks like it was a dispute between uh, a civic reform group that wanted to introduce reforms, which failed, and the police union that wanted more cops, which passed. And it stayed mm-hmm. in ever since. Yeah, I I looked at um, the St. Paul Charter, and there's certainly nothing like that in that charter. I have not looked at other charters. Okay. We're ready to move on to the next item in the agenda, um, which is um, other legal issues. And I, I added that to the agenda because, um, again, our, we had a pretty, um, quite a, a thorough discussion of uh, the Pelra issue, and that's kind of still pending and I the at least what I got out of it is the city could get sued but it's not our problem at this point depending on how the amendments come out but there are other people have raised issues that might cast some doubt on the city council's amendment and at this point I just wondered if people had questions or issues that they wanted to raise that we and of course the issue of the scope of our Authority we've already talked about, although that's not specific to the amendment. But uh, Mr. Schoon, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, the uh, opinion that uh, Chair Clay got today did, does cover the Pelra issues. I know Peter Gender, Commissioner Gender, did talk about that at one of the meetings. I think the last uh, work group meeting. But yeah. I just wanted to let you know that there's a written. Um, analysis and a written op- uh, opinion. That's the one that your uh, Clay got today. And I believe that he will be distributing to all the other charter commissioners. Yes. Chair Clay? I will be doing that. I'll be uh, circulating it around to all charter commissioners. Just ask everyone to, because that is a privileged communication, uh, don't share it publicly. And um, one thing I would like us to consider is what is our end work product going to look like? Are we going to be making a recommendation as to each amendment that you should vote yes or no, or that you should take more time? Or are we going to be just laying out our facts and findings and, and without making a specific recommendation? People thought about that? Um, I certainly have, Mr. Chair, and I um, I just took as a blueprint what we did in 2018, which was to have a thorough report on what we looked at and what and what we found, and a recommendation. And it seems to me that that, in the scope of our review, that is something that's appropriate. But of course, I'd like to hear from other people. Uh, no. if, I, if I can just, my recollection is that in 2018, we determined to ask for more time first, and we didn't have a report at that time because the report wasn't issued until we had used up our extra time. Mm-hmm. Then we made a determination that we would vote to reject the proposed council amendment and then we wrote a, a report. Correct. Uh, so at the time we requested additional time, we had not made a recommendation yet. Correct. I was thinking more of when we got to the end. Um, Commissioner Abbott? Um, yeah, I guess my question is for a charter proposal that we initiate uh, for for the ballot, does that same process apply? I mean, it, does it make sense to do a report on our own amendment? I mean, if we pass it and we send it on to the council for their um, language review or their, their ballot question review, uh, I mean, I would presume that that would operate as a, a vote to recommend our own amendment, I guess. I don't know if uh, if the procedures for our own amendment are, are different somehow from uh, reacting to a council proposal. Well, one thing is that is different is the timing. If we follow the timeline, um, there will be two different votes um, for each amendment. 
two different times. We're actually moving into the last item on the agenda, at this, which is next steps. And my thought was that if we were going to draft a report, we have to start thinking about it now. And so that is why I circulated just a draft outline of what the report might contain. And as I said, it, it was uh, similar to what we did in 2018. Not necessarily identical, but the, the, the same um, blueprint, essentially. And I was hoping that if we have time and if we so choose to do today, to just look at that outline. If we're, I suppose first we have to decide if we want to do a report. And secondly, if we do, if what we want to have contained in that report. And uh, Jer? Yes, Sister Schwartz. Uh, yes, I like the outline and I thought the outline was very good. And I think that it would be good to have that type of information in the report. My basic concern, though, is that I am not worried about getting on the ballot this year. I'm worried about doing it right. right. And I'd like to see us take the time to do it right. And so the report might then point out that nothing should happen right now until all these other studies are being done. And I think we need to do um, more than just what's being done right now. I think we need to go to the community find out what they believe and what they want and what they see. I think we need to study the yeah. department. I think we need to have the information come to us from consultants who have done this kind of work in other cities throughout the United States. I think we need to add all together. And then I think we need to propose an idea to the council mayor that they would be hopefully would set up a, whatever that structure calls for to provide good public safety in our city. And, and I'm not sure that this outline permits that, but at the same time, I think if we fill out the outline and say we need time to do that, it's fine with me. If I, I well, this is a question I have, I guess. If we, I suppose we have two choices. We can reject, I mean, three choices, four choices. We could reject the amendment that the city council has proposed. We, of course, all the, all the choices we all know about, reject, accept, offer a substitute, or ask for more time. Um, and so we still have to do something. Yes, we do, and that's why I thought your proposal was very good. Thanks. Uh, Chair Clegg. Um, we won't know what the Charter Commission is going to do until our August 5th meeting. Um, right. So it would seem awkward that we would that we as a committee would make a recommendation for example if if we moved to approve but the charter commission as a whole rejected or vice versa or we made a motion to act one way or the other and the charter commission voted to take its additional time then our report would be inconsistent with the action of the full commission it seems to me that there is time after we act on August 5th to write a report, even if we approve or reject, uh, and certainly if we ask for extra time. So in order to make the report a report of, of the full commission rather than just a report of this work group, I think we need to wait until after August 5th um, to do anything other than provide information. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Mad Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Jarrell Isaacson. Mm -hmm. Just a question maybe for Chair Clegg. Uh, would this task force then make one of those recommendations or could we prior to the August 5th meeting, could we say we recommend approval, rejection or more time or a substitute? Thank you, Commissioner. We certainly could do that. Yes. And it, but it would be just that, a recommendation 
that this work group is making to the Charter Commission, and the Charter Commissioners could all, and obviously will, <laughs> all, all vote as they see fit, and they may or may not follow the recommendation. So I don't think we should issue a report in the sense of it being a report okay. of the Charter Commission. Thank you. Chair, thank you. Um, Chair Clegg, as I'm, I'm just trying to understand where we are, which is I, I think it's incumbent on us to make some sort of recommendation to the Charter Commission on August 5th. And it doesn't have to be a report, but we've, we've been working on this as a work group before that we will have been working on it for over a month. And if we want to make we should make some presentation to the full Charter Commission to, if nothing else, to inform the vote. And I, I was thinking about um, how we would structure the August 5th meeting, and I was thinking it would start off with a presentation by this committee to the full Charter Commission. Um, and if we have a recommendation, that would be our opportunity to make a recommendation to the full commission. Then as chair, I would just let people go around the room and let people comment who had comments. And then there would be um, one of three motions, I guess, since, since we've eliminated all the possible substitutes, the three motions would be to approve, reject, or take additional time. And, and Madam Chair, um, when would we have to make that recommendation by? Would it be next week? Next week is the 28th. Oh, well, we're going to have a meeting on the 4th. So I would say between next week and the following week, we would need to come to grips with it. Makes our job simpler in the next two weeks, except that we can um, attempt to collect more information, as people have suggested. Any other questions, comments, business? Sorry, Madam Chair, Madam yes. Chair. Yes, yeah, I wanted to go back to item number three for just a minute. We received a uh, a letter or a communication really from Judge um, uh, Lang, yes. June Lang, and in that letter she uh, or communication she pointed out a number of legal questions that she was raising, and I wondered if that had been referred to our city attorney to find out whether or not these are important that we need to talk about. Um, she raised a number of different things in that letter, and I think it's important that we maybe send that letter to the city attorney and have them take a look at it. Uh, Chair Clegg? I'm putting it on you. Um, we can certainly do that. I know the clerk's office has that letter because they sent it out earlier today and would ask um, the clerk if he could provide a copy of that to uh, City Attorney Carol Bushoon for review. Yes, certainly. Thank you. I agree, those were good questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other comments, questions, matters to be raised? Well, if that's the case, I would say in preparation for our next meeting, um, we get a little break and if we've concluded all business to come before the Charter Commission's Public Safety Work Group, with no objection, we can stand adjourned. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all.